Hello, my name is Greg Watford and welcome to this video which I've entitled Return of the Gold Standard. Were you aware that back in 1933, President Wilson partially removed the gold standard from the US dollar? Uh, this was to improve the economy, the US economy after the Great Depression. And then in 1971, we forgot uh, President Nixon completely removed the gold from backing the US dollar. Uh, and since then, it's floated on the, on the spot market, mostly floated up. Uh, it's, it, back in the 1970s, it was around about $35 an ounce. It was that way for almost 50 years uh, or so. And um, in 2011, it rose, in September 2011, it rose to $19.20, almost $2,000 an ounce. Now, that's a 6,000% increase in the, in the value of gold, value in inverted commas, of gold. If you had a lot of gold back from the 1970s, you would be very excited in 2011. But if you just had paper money, what it means is the paper money, the, the purchasing power of your paper money in the bank has now decreased by 6,000%. Well, it seems that way anyhow. Okay, look, let's go and have a look at three very short video clips which look at returning gold as the... As the um, a standard for all our currencies, including the US. Okay, will the US go back onto the gold standard? I'm, I'm asked this question a lot because it is such an obvious solution. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, the history of fiat currency is once government has tasted the power of creating currency out of thin air, they're very, very reluctant to give up that power, to see reason that they're heading to the fiat currency graveyard. Uh, instead, history has shown us that whenever a currency starts going bad, government restricts more and more the flow of capital. Um, they, they do various things that will make it more difficult to transact. So my expectation is we're continuing down this road to the fiat currency graveyard for the dollar, and it will get there eventually. The government will stop it by trying to impose capital controls, restricting Americans the freedom to transact, things of that nature, maybe outlawing again, once again, uh, once again uh, the ability to, to own gold. I, we don't know because we can't predict. Uh, but rather than seeing reason and going back on the right road, they're going to continue down the same road because the ability to create currency out of thin air gives government a lot of power and they're reluctant to give up that power. If a working person were to open a savings account or money market account today, they would receive a, an interest rate of between 0.15 percent, you know, a tiny fraction of 1 percent, all the way up to maybe 2 percent. How would implementing a classical gold standard impact savings rates? What kind of savings returns have we seen under the gold standard in the past? Savings rates uh, under the gold standard generally varied between uh, 2 and 3 and 4 percent in the short-term money market and as high as 5 and 6 percent in the long-term market. Indeed, the long-term market uh, the long-term market for savings often was as low as 2 or 3 percent. It d depended on the, the stage of the business cycle. But one thing was continuous. You always got a fair return for saving your money in the bank. And you got even a more than a fair return because the money you saved in the bank today in 30 years was worth the same in its purchasing power of goods and services in the market as it was on the day that you saved it, which is the difference. Uh, we face today, where you save a dollar in 1970 and it's worth 15 to 20 cents in, uh, in 2011. And that's as a result of the fact that we live in a world of paper money. Now, what the gold standard does, uh, which is so different from the paper money standard, is that it creates a tremendous demand for investment because those, those who are uh, taking a chance with capital, businessmen, small businessmen especially, have every incentive to borrow money because they can believe that the economy is going to be growing gradually and the value of their debts when they borrow money from the bank, um, they can count on what it is they're going to have to repay. They, in, today, with the volatile dollar rising, sometimes their debts are very costly to re repay. Other times, the value of their debts are falling and stimulating borrowing beyond which uh, it should be, leading to housing 
crises of the uh, of the past cycle. So what it does, it's, it provides a steady level playing field so that borrowers and lenders, savers and investors have incentives to exchange capital with one another, creates an enormous demand for investment and at the same time its counterpart savings, it creates a tremendous investment to save to provide the savings to cause the economy to grow. Well, once you have businessmen having confidence in the currency, once you have savers who have confidence in the currency, you have a prescription for full employment, demand for labor, which is generally beyond the capacity to fulfill it, and what, it, what happens is you get high and rising real wages, which is of course uh, the key to restoring our economy today because we know that real wages have been falling for working people for almost a generation. Real wages have been falling for middle income people, those on wages and salary. Uh, real income has been falling for everybody on fixed income who have been cheated by the, the long-term decline in the value of the dollar. Stubborn unemployment rates, a devaluing dollar, and waning trust in government policies is leading to a golden trend. More than a dozen states have introduced laws to recognize gold as legal currency. In 2011, Utah was the first to make it legal to do business using gold. In May, the Arizona legislature voted to recognize gold and silver as legal tender and would become the second state to do so if the governor signs the bill. The point is, is that we are stimulating our economy. We're paying our bills by printing more money. He is referring to the Federal Reserve and Ben Bernanke's decision to implement round after round of quantitative easing. Bernanke's quantitative easing policies means the Treasury printing more money. But critics worry that this printing frenzy will lead to the dollar continuing to lose its value. FDR took the U.S. off the gold standard in 1933. The Federal Reserve took over the money matters. Their first role was supposed to be the stability of the dollar, but we haven't seen that. We've seen a steady devaluation to a fraction of a cent of what the 1913 dollar was worth at the time. In fact, critics like Peterson blame the Federal Reserve for the most recent economic recession. But when you look at what happened in 2007, 2008, the monetary policies of the Federal Reserve wiped out enormous parts of the uh, financial industry, and people from Main Street to, Mall, to Wall Street were wiped out. Among Bernanke's most outspoken critics, Ron Paul. Do you think gold is money? No. The former presidential candidate called to end the Fed. We have devalued our paper currencies. Gold has gone up. And that's why there's consideration from many, not only Ron Paul, but Steve Forbes and others, to talk about having some sort of modified gold standard where fiat currencies are anchored by hard assets. Though there's a renewed push to go gold, some economists say a move back to the gold standard would be disastrous. It doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, what caused the Great Recession in the United States was an $8 trillion housing bubble. A housing bubble that led to less construction and consumer consumption. Those opposed to bringing back the gold standard say fears of inflation are overblown. Well, the Federal Reserve created over $2.3 trillion since 2008, and inflation is running at about 1.1% annually right now over the last 12 months. So uh, it's kind of a, a unworkable solution to a non-existent problem. But the problem, real or perceived, is triggering a gold rush of sorts with more citizens and states losing faith in the decisions made here. In Washington, Liz Wall, RT. Triggering a gold rush of sorts. Would you like to be part of that? But what I've found with a lot of people that they find that the price of gold is, is still out of their reach. Even though it's come down from the almost $2,000 an ounce, it's currently now around about $1,300 an ounce. A kilogram of gold is $42,000 approximately. And as I said, an ounce of gold is, is $1,300. So if that's the case, we have a solution. It's actually called carrot bars gold. Pure, tradable, 999.9, .9, 24-karat gold. And there it is there. It's one gram of gold in a tradable package. 
So what I want you to do is just below this video, you'll find a link, a reference to Profit Through Gold. Click on that link, fill in your details, your name and email address. I always like to know who I'm talking talking to, and I will personally send you some emails with some very, very informative videos that will explain things like where money actually comes from, why we should be buying gold at this point in time, and how you can be paid to buy and save gold. That's right, you can be paid to buy and save your gold. So go and click on the link now, just below this video, called Profit Through Gold, and, and fill in your details and I'll personally send you those videos. If you'd like to con contact me directly, my email address is info at carrotbarsgold.com.au. So that's info at carrotbarsgold.com.au. I do hope you've got value out of this video and I look forward to, uh, to talking with you again in a future video. Bye.